This is the Lotus Bloom Podcast. And here is your host, Morgan Wiley. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Lotus Bloom Podcast. I'm your host, Morgan Wiley, and this is the segment, It's Time to Write. In this segment, I have the opportunity to share with you how my current project is going and the processes I use as I write or some behind-the-scenes information that you may not have known or that you might just find interesting. I also get the opportunity to invite other authors on. I love this part because I find myself learning things that are valuable to me as a writer. And I love hearing how other, how other authors approach their processes and how they dive into a story a particular way or how they keep track of their characters and details. And in this episode, that's exactly what we're going to hear about. Fantasy author Devery Walls is going to share with us her world Bible techniques. And you guys, this is awesome. Now, I am in the fifth book of my Age of Elandria series, my young adult fantasy. I kept track with a spreadsheet of all the details that I felt like I needed to know. But now, this many books later, I wish I had kept track of more details Uh, While I did to some degree, I just feel like it needs more. And Devery's technique and approach to this, I think, just might be what I've been looking for. So I'm super excited for you to hear her technique. And I hope that you are able to find something helpful in your own writing. But if nothing else, maybe it's just fascinating to hear how another author works. So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Devery Walls. Hey guys, this is Devery Walls, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about how to create a series Bible and why you want one. If I'm being honest, this is the first series Bible that I have used. Now, what is a series Bible? Basically, it's like your reference point uh, to anything and everything that you have put in your books ever. And it is in another document so that one, you as the author can easily access this, but under the happy thought that something wonderful happens and let's say your story gets picked up uh, by anybody who wants to maybe make it into a movie, right? That's all of our dreams. Uh, These screenwriters need a little extra help and they are going to be asking if you have a Bible because they also need reference points. Any professional work is done using these. Uh, Every running TV show, every long running movie series will always have a Bible that they can pass around to to their writers. And it is equally beneficial to authors, even if it's just your own work. Now, my first series that I did uh, was a four book series. And I don't know if it was because I was younger and my brain was a little bit sharper. But for some reason, I was able to keep track of a very intricate magic system in my head. That's great. Uh, This new series that I'm working on, the Venator series, is a completely different story. And I realized pretty quickly that I was in trouble. So the Venator series is going to be a serial style series, which means we could have a lot of books, 8, 10, 15, 22. It just kind of depends. And the plot structure is set up to do this. Now, this means that this is even more complicated than your traditional three or four book series and the amount of content that I'm having to set up in these books. So what is a series Bible? How do you do it? There are a lot of different ways that you can set this up, and I would suggest maybe Googling and finding out what other people do. What I have chosen to do is set up a document in Scrivener. For those of you who don't know what Scrivener is, check it out. Uh, 
it's a great writing tool. I don't use it as extensively as some authors do, but there's a certain flexibility that lends itself very, very well to writing a series Bible. When you get into Scrivener, you're going to have uh, two thirds of the page that is going to be a, a page, right? Your paper where you're, ty- where you're typing. And on the left side, there's going to be a bar that when you're writing a novel will be basically a table of contents. So you'll see your chapter, you know, scene one, scene two, scene three, chapter two, scene one, scene two, scene three. And the beautiful thing about this is you can drag and drop these chapters, which is a big deal when you're editing. But it also leads a really nice setup for a series Bible because this left-hand column is acting a lot like a table of contents that is clickable. Now, I'm going to be honest. I am a very highly creative individual, and my brain works in a very random, chaotic rhythm. If you say the word spreadsheet to me, I twitch. Uh, Everyone's eyes that I know light up like they're so excited, right? It's like a spreadsheet. It's so organized. And I literally don't know what to do with that. It's too organized. I just, I really, really struggle with it. So because of that, finding some sort of system that worked for me has been difficult because a lot of it is very spreadsheet based and I don't like that. So what I did was I went and I looked up Scrivener templates. I didn't know this was a thing, guys. This is a thing. Basically, what this means is someone else has gone in and done all the fancy schmancy programming stuff to get Scrivener to do something very specific. And some of these lovely people have put their templates on blogs and websites that you can just pull. So I found probably three or four uh, different series Bible templates that I was able to drag and drop in to Scrivener and Scrivener uploaded it and changed the layout accordingly. The first couple I didn't love. Uh, The one I landed on is a very simple alphabetical order. So on my left hand bar, you have all these file folders that just say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z so that I can just alphabetize it like maybe a dictionary entry. Now, the thing that I really love about this format is there's an extra bar at the top in my project bar. So normally it's gonna ask me if I want to add a new folder or if I just wanna add a new sheet of paper, basically it's called new text. And this one says new from template. And if I go over there, she has done an amazing job of a character sketch. And that opens up another drop down bar where I can pick a already pre-filled out sheet like character body basics, character using actions to show, character symbols and motifs, character, greatest fear, character, backstory, wound, story. So when I add those over into my document, it's basically a worksheet, right? Where it asks like, what was your character's greatest fear? And then you fill in the answer according to what you've put in your book. Now, (laughs) she's also done, sorry, I'm laughing because I'm getting ahead of myself here. She's also done a location sketch and a basic entry. This saves me a lot of time from having to go in and type like character backstory, character wounding, because it's already there. I just picked the template that I need and put it in alphabetical order. Now, one of the things that I, I, I like about the alphabetical is it does help me to still have a more random flowy organization thing happening here while still being very easy to reference because that was my main problem is I could find ways to write it down, but referencing those things, that was becoming a problem. Uh, so let's see if we can get you an example here. So if you go down, I am pretty new into entering all of this and it's pretty much the nightmare of my life. So don't say I didn't warn you. It's just a necessary nightmare of my life. Uh, Let's see. So under the letter C, I have a page on crossbow, which is empty. And so I don't know how it got here. Uh, Council statements and policies. So I have a council of seven uh, paranormal creatures. And anything that they've said that is a policy change, a rule that they've set down for the world, I'm putting in here so that I don't accidentally uh, go against that because I forgot I wrote it. Council history points, also somewhere I can drop anything that they say, like, you know, this many years ago, this happened, or this many years ago, this happened, I would put it under uh, my tab of council history points. I also have a tab under C called Culture on Eon. And in big letters, when you click on this, I've written these are general truths, specifications would be made in the clan or individual files. So what I'm saying is, here's a general overview of Eon. However, if you want to look 
at a vampire culture, for example, you're going to want to go down and click on the vampire file. If you want to know what the fey culture is, you're going to need to go down and click on the fey file. Uh, so this is more of a generalized area for anything that doesn't fit or is a universal truth amongst them all. There are a lot of tabs. <laughs> If you look under M, I have one folder called Magic Spells and Precedents, and now I've had to break it down a lot so that I can find it easily. So I have a tab for orbs, magic and vials, the magic gates and the descriptions of them, the magic, the gates and any magic regarding how they are used, rules that are specific to wizards, magic used specifically by wizards, so on and so forth. As you can see, it really is limitless what you can do and it's really convertible to what your needs are if you have a simple straightforward storyline uh, which is not the definition of what I'm working with here on the Venator series it would be super easy to pay someone to do this for you and I would love more than anything in this world to pay someone to do this for me the problem that I'm running into in my particular series is that because the story is set up to be very easily continuable. I have to leave a lot of open threads. I also have to make sure that those threads are slight enough that they don't bother the reader or irritate the reader when it's obvious that those threads either are not tied up because maybe we wrapped up the series early or it's just a thread that I chose not to pick back up again, which means they are unrecognizable to someone that I pay. <laughs> So I have to go through this book line by line, making sure that I add in all the technical details, as well as anything that I know I've dropped for specific purposes later and write reminders of all of those open storylines that I can easily reference and pull back in or make sure that I wrap back up or explain. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you guys would like to see a video made of this, please drop a comment below and I can walk you guys through this and show you what I have, how we're doing this, and uh, maybe some examples of where to find uh, templates like this. And I hope that this is something that makes your writing a little bit easier once you get it all in the document. Right now, right now I kind of want to jump off a cliff because it's a lot of work, <laughs> but... I'm going to be so glad when it's done and it's going to be hugely valuable as I move forward into the rest of these books. Good luck with your writing, guys, and I hope you have a great day. Devery, thank you so much for being on the show today and for all your incredible information. Like I said in the intro, I am definitely going to be looking further into this and hopefully adapting some of this into my own world Bible. If you all want to check out Devery's books um, or follow along with her journey, you can find her on Instagram at Devery Walls, D-E-V-R-I-W-A-L-L-S, or her website, the same, DeveryWalls.com. Thank you for listening. Have a great day and happy writing.